الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى علي وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله This question has been asked countless times from various uh, sisters uh, <clears throat> that are single um, asking about you know advice about moving away uh, with with family with married families to make hijrah or to seek knowledge um, and it's very important in general just to have a few things in mind when being in these kind of situations because often it comes from usually this situation is the situation of uh, reverts people who came to islam and do not have the family support or a family support network from amongst believers. Likewise, this also happens with sisters that are in non-Muslim lands who want to make hijrah to Muslim lands that they may have friends that are abroad and they may want to move with them. And more often than not, it is not with other single sisters, but it was with married family. So it's a few things to give consideration when being in these situations. For one, we know uh, the greatness of hijrah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, in, the, in the Quran, and in the authentic sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما أعمال بنيات وإنما لكل امرئ المناوى فمن كانت هجته إلى الله ورسوله فهجته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجته للدنيا يصيبها امرأة ينكحها فهجته إلى ما هجر إليه أخرجه شيخان in the hadith of Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه who said I heard the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying Verily, actions are tied to the intentions, and everyone shall get that for which he intended. Therefore, he who migrates for Allah and his messenger, then he's migrated for Allah and his messenger. And he who migrates to take some woman in marriage or for some worldly gain will get that for which he migrated for. And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. So, the reason I mentioned this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the importance of correcting our intention first and foremost. When uh, anyone in that situation, one to make hijrah, one to make talib al-ilm, correct your intention that it is an act of ibadah. So that way you have the success of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either in this life as well as the hereafter. That even if you don't achieve that by having a sound uh, intention and striving to do that, you'll be rewarded with that. Uh, that's the first piece of advice. And that, that comes from the nusus, from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the importance of having sincerity in our ibadah in order to have it accepted. And hijrah is a great act of ibadah. Hijrah... Uh, and hijrah is of two types. And as the ulama mentioned, the greater of the hijrah, and more importantly, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam mentioned in another authentic hadith that the greatest hijrah is the hijrah from uh, sinfulness. So there are two types of hijrah. There's the hijrah from uh, a person leaving off their sins and their desires, those wicked sins. So a person who, for example, stays away from, they have a problem with drugs, and they are able to stay away from those drugs. They make hijra from those drugs and that environment of drugs, those things which are going to bring them back to that sin. Likewise, the one addicted to pornography or afflicted with pornography or the one afflicted with zina or the one afflicted with other listening to music or whatever the case may be from amongst the various sins, that by making hijrah is to put a a waqaya, to put a a uh, a shield or a barrier between and a form of protection between you and those sins. That that is the greatest form of hijrah. And the second type of hijrah, which is found in the books of fiqh predominantly and in many of the texts, is the hijrah, uh, and and that first hijrah is a type of hijrah to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and one of the greatest forms of hijrah. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is leaving off the sins. Uh, the other type is the hijrah, which is a physical hijrah, and that is the hijrah of, for example, uh, leaving a non-Muslim land to uh, to live in to reside in a Muslim land, or leaving a land of bid'ah to le live in a land of sunnah, or uh, vice versa, or one land that you can uh, to leaving a land to a place where you can practice your religion better, that that is the type of physical hijrah, of leaving 
that off. And so this is Khair Avim for the one who is able to and the one who wishes to do so. And there are very various ahkam related to that, and we're not going to talk about that, whether it's wajib or whether it's mustahab, and that depends upon the situation of the, you know, where the person resides and so on and so forth and how they can practice their religion. But however, regarding some important advice, uh, it's very important to make that intention, as we mentioned, and secondly, to have means, to make a means. And what I mean by that is that a uh, often since a person who's in this situation, if a sister is going to do this, and often it's younger sisters that are in this situation, and they want to move with a married family, either uh, often it can be a situation where that married family wants to take her on as another wife, which is perfectly khair, perfectly permissible, if that's what they want. But it's very important that sisters are aware of this situation, number one. And number two, that they also, it sh it's very important that they should have trust. They should know these people that they're going to reside with and stay with and make hijra with them. So that they, uh, and, and one way that you learn is when you're in those situations, you learn who you can really trust. Because often, sometimes it's through correspondence, people know one another. But there's nothing like when you really live with one another, then you find out we, we learn each other's shortcomings. When you travel with someone, when you eat with someone, as the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, mentioned that this is the way that, the, uh, that people get to know one another is in those real situations. And that's how you know who you're with. So it's very important to be aware of those things that, you know, those are serious situations and, and that a person is going to be in a weaker situation if you move to live with someone and you don't have any means, you don't have any money, you don't have anything. Sometimes people, they go and they put themselves in vulnerable positions because you will be vulnerable. So it's very important to be aware of that. The third point I want to mention along with that vulnerability is that if sisters are able to prepare themselves financially so that you don't have the vulnerability. For example, a sister wants to go and seek knowledge and they're going to go to another country and stay with people, make sure that you have your own means so that way you're not dependent on anyone. You know, because usually when people invite you, there's more often than not, they expect something in return. So either they want to marry or either it could be something else or you could easily overstay your welcome. This happens. And so it's very important to try to be as independent as possible. And that is by taking financial steps in order to do that. So if it's going to be talib al ilm that you have a plan mapped out along with those other pieces of advice we just mentioned of, uh, of uh, having a correct niya and so forth and that you've made some provisions, you've, you've taken away, you have a means of earning a livelihood or you have some wealth that you've accumulated in order to fulfill that. Likewise, the same with hijra. Hijra even more so because then you're going to maybe go to another country, uh, another land, and if you have no provisions, then you're totally dependent on someone else waiting to perhaps get married and swept off your feet, which there's nothing wrong with that, but it puts yourself in a vulnerable position. And so my advice is to prepare yourself so that way you have tools, you have additional tools, and you don't have to just accept any situation, whether that be marital or whether that be uh, some other situation where you can be compromised. It's very important to take those steps. And those are just some little advices that I would advise uh, the sisters because it, 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 this question comes up many, many times. Many single sisters have this type of situation and scenario, especially amongst our sisters from Ahl Sunnah that want to you know, go and make hijra and want to go and study and want to go and do various activities. So it's very important to have some knowledge about that situation and background and a correct intention and go forward in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if that be the best situation for you. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good. The last point I want to mention is also is making istikhara, you know, putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, as we mentioned prior to this, tawakkal ala Allah is ittimad ala Allah wa fa'la asbab. It is taking the, uh, you know, it's making an effort and then putting your trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that doesn't mean you just jump into a foreign country. You have no money, you have no nothing, you have no prepara preparation, because you're vulnerable. It can be a dangerous, a dangerous and serious situation. But rather you've taken the steps 
to do the best you can financially and you've made contacts or whatever the case may be and then you tr put your you left all your heart and your trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you've taken the means on ittimad Allah wa fi'l asbab you relied on Allah you 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 put your uh, 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 you made your preparation and you made in effort. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was correct was from myself and the shit. Incorrect was from myself and the shit. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.